Welcome to another episode, everyone. Today we'll be testing and replacing an absolute pressure sensor. Uh, if you have a trouble code P0105, this happens to be the uh, absolute pressure sensor. Now really two things you absolutely need to uh, check your sensor. Number one is you need a vacuum pump. If you don't have one of these guys, you can pick them up. Uh, they're pretty inexpensive, I would say around $25 or so. If you do plan on doing your own auto repair, really get yourself one of these guys because you can do a load of tests with this gadget. Uh, if you don't want to purchase one, most likely you can rent one from your local auto parts supplier. But again, if you do plan on doing your own auto repair, do yourself a favor and pick one up. The other thing is we'll need a multimeter, <coughs> excuse me, multimeter. Two functions specifically. Number one, we'll need to use the volt setting. And another one, another test that we'll be doing is for continuity. Continuity just essentially means that two points make a connection. Uh, so we definitely need these two things to make this happen. Uh, now this happens to be a uh, 97 Maxima that I'll be doing this test and replacement on. Later model vehicles have the absolute pressure sensor built into the ECM. On this vehicle, it's an older vehicle, so it's external. It's actually in the engine compartment. So just check your application because if it's part of the ECM, this video really won't have anything to do with for your vehicle. This is really for a, uh, an external uh, application. So that being said, let's go ahead and let's begin. So the pressure sensor is located right here on this Maxima. And real quick, all that this sensor does is that it monitors the barometric and the intake manifold pressure, but it works directly with the mat barrel sensor. This, this happens to be a sensor, let me just zoom out here for a sec, that lives right here on this vehicle and they work in conjunction. This sensor in, in no means controls the engine whatsoever. It's specifically a diagnostic tool. But again, if this starts to throw a code, uh, 105, you really need to address it. So that being said, I'm going to remove it from the harness. This happens to be a 10 millimeter uh, nut right here. And then we're gonna hook up the vacuum line and do some tests. Okay, so once we remove it from the mount, we have a hose right here. And again, this comes directly from the uh, mat barrel switch. But what we want to do is remove this hose. Now be very careful when you do this because the nipple coming off of this sensor is plastic. And so, ob so obviously don't use any pliers, vice grips, nothing like that. Just be gentle with it. What I like to do is use my left hand to uh, pull down on and then with my right hand, I'll use a flathead and then just sort of twist it on all sides, to the front, the back, all the way around, 360 degrees, and slowly, don't rush this, but slowly the uh, vacuum hose will come off. So now for this next part, if you take a look at the harness here, let me just make sure you guys can see this. If you take a look at the harness, you have three leads going into this harness, the uh, uh, red, white, and black. In this case, we need the middle one, which happens to be the white one. But to do this test, we need to leave this connected. So you get yourself a paper clip, and all that you're going to do is insert it. There's a rubber grommet back here that we just need to get around. And uh, in fact, when dealers do this test, they have something called, uh, I think it was called a T-pin. But essentially, you can just use this uh, paper clip and you'll feel it go right through the rubber grommet and make contact with the metal connector inside here. Once that's done, get yourself a, a lead here. In this case, I just have a simple uh, alligator clip and I'm just going to attach the clip to this lead right here. And now what I'm going to do is just quickly hook up the vacuum tester uh, right to this lead right here and then we'll apply vacuum and see what we come up with. Okay, so I have the vacuum tester hooked up to the uh, sensor here, and now what we'll need is the multimeter. Specifically, again, we need the volts setting. So I'm going to place it right there to the volt setting. Now, if you haven't used one of these guys, it's very simple. You have obviously here a black and a red lead. The Black lead, this goes to ground, and the red lead will go to the sensor, okay? So let me just see 
It's a little difficult trying to get this all on one screen here so you guys can see it, but that should be pretty good. So once all that is hooked up, you're going to turn the ignition key to the start position, or excuse me, to the on position. You won't crank the car, just turn the key to the on position. And as you can see, we clearly do have a reading here. Now, as I apply pressure, this voltage should change. If it does not change, that's a very good indication that this sensor is no longer working correctly. If it does change, then the sensor is okay. So let's take a look. Just slowly build vacuum. And as you can see, it does correspond with the voltmeter. So now we verified, let me just release the pressure here. Now we verify that this sensor is working correctly. Now on your specific vehicle, the repair manual will be extremely specific on exactly how many inches of mercury or kilopascals. That's a reading on this dial over here. You need to uh, dial in and correspond with the voltage. In this case, I'm just doing a uh, really a general uh, how-to, but again, if you don't have a manual, you can still get a pretty good idea if this sensor is working correctly or not. So now we've verified that this sensor is indeed working. Now let's go on to the next step, which is seeing if this uh, harness here is receiving power. So in other words, if you've just done this test and it passed, but you have a trouble code P0105, it's something else now that you need to look at this sensor is in good shape. Okay, before we do this next test, just make sure you turn the ignition key off again. And of course, I have the sensor installed back on its mount and the vacuum line leading to the sensor again. Uh, so again, make sure you turn off the ignition key. You're going to unplug the harness connector. All right. And then again, we're going to need, let me zoom out here. We're going to need this voltmeter. Again, place it to the volt setting. And then once again, turn the ignition key to the on position. And what we wanna see here is approximately five volts. So again, the black wire goes to ground and the positive wire here will be going to terminal three. Again, you have three terminals in here. So I want terminal three in this case and we get exactly 5.05.1 volts. So this just verified that power is getting to the sensor. So now we know the sensor is good. We know, we know that power is getting to the sensor. So now we can move on to the next test. And if you're not receiving a voltage here, just check the wires. And very often they may fray, maybe have a short somewhere. Make your repairs and get power back to the sensor. But just check the wiring back here if you're not getting any reading whatsoever. Now the next test that we need to see is if we have uh, ground circuitry. And this is very easy to do. What you're going to do, now in this case you definitely need a multimeter. And on a multimeter you have a setting for continuity. Which happens to be this guy right here. Let me just zoom in so you guys can see what this symbol looks like. Right here, this is the continuity symbol. And uh, the only continuity is very simple. Essentially, it just verifies that two points uh, make contact. That's a very easy uh, explanation of all this does. So, what we're going to do again, you have the black lead going to ground, and then we have the red lead going to the first terminal here. And we, and we should hear an audible sound, okay? And we do. Again. 
Now, if you're not receiving a reading here, what you want to do is check the ground circuitry. It's different on every vehicle, but on this car, let me just undo the camera here. On this vehicle, if we take a look, right here we have two screws, and these happen to be uh, the ground circuitry points. So if these were corroded, maybe if they're loose, anything like that at all, uh, then we can have a problem with the ground circuitry and the test that we just performed would fail. In other words, you would not hear any audible sound whatsoever. So if, if your vehicle is not passing this continuity test, you have to find the ground points. Check again for, uh, for any corrosion. Make sure that these wires aren't frayed whatsoever. Uh, correct the problem. Redo the test and you should be in good shape. And one thing just to add regarding the continuity testing, if you're uh, having a problem getting a continuity reading, it could also be the ECM. Uh, most of the times I would say it, it is not, just because if the ECM does have a problem, you would have a load of other problems on top of just this one sensor. Uh, but it could be that as well. And if you're curious uh, or if you want further information on that, just leave me a message and I'll be happy to explain more. I'm not going to really get into that right now because I'm just trying to get to the main points on why this sensor could be throwing you a trouble code. And oh, this would solve, I would say, at least 95% of your problems out there. So, now the last thing to check, again, you have a vacuum hose, obviously, and again, this runs to the mat barrel switch. So if we follow the hose, here is your matte barrel switch on this vehicle. This guy right here. Now, if this hose is old, if it's frayed, if it's cracking, if it's not in good shape, then you will obviously receive a trouble code. So, if, it, if you're not sure if you do have a leak, just do yourself a favor. Remove the hose, bring it to your local auto parts supplier. They'll measure it, cut you a brand new one and uh, just reinstall it. You can do a pressure test on it, but to be honest, you can usually tell if you do have a problem with these hoses because once they get old and they start cracking, it's very obvious. Uh, so that's really about it, guys. That's essentially the four tests you can perform. Testing the sensor, testing if power is getting to the harness, uh, testing the continuity, and of course, the vacuum hosing. So this should really solve all of your problems. Again, it could be a very slight chance that the ECM is your problem. If you want further information, just feel free to send me a message. I'll be happy to do that. And uh, until then, we'll see you next time.